Hello, my name is Matias Cavalli. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Extreme X-Men issue number two. This is a pretty relevant issue, even though I really didn't like this series, because this is actually the end of the happy-go-lucky, upbeat, beast, Hank McCoy after this is going to be very serious, always angry, always having issues, dealing with also problems with his mutation. He's going to change from this form to like this giant cat <laughs> monster thing. And his look in, in general is going to be in a constant state of flux every couple of years. They're going to change it up. This particular incarnation of uh, Beast is my all-time favorite. So Extreme X-Men, which was written by Chris Claremont. Sadly, it's not his best work. But the art by Salvador La Roca, it, he just kills it. The lineup is also sort of interesting. We have Beast, Storm, new character called Thunderbird. That has fire powers, fire blasts, and stuff like that. He's sort of a stand-in for Sunfire. Bishop, Psylocke, Rogue, and Sage. So this came out way back in 2001. Uh, this particular X-Men team was actually... They were in search of Destiny's uh, diaries to see... What her prophecies... Uh, held in the future of mutant kind, how it is going to affect them. So they're going across the world trying to find these diaries. They go to Spain and they get their asses kicked by the Guardia Civil, Spanish uh, security forces, and more specifically, specifically a, a part of the Guardia Civil called Action Force. So technically, they were defeated by Spanish GI Joe. So I, re I reread this today. I found that totally hilarious. So, as you can see, the art really holds up. Salvador La Roca just kills it. And we have this new villain called Vargas. He's sort of hot on the X-Men trail. We don't know what's his deal with the X-Men, why he wants to stop him or take him down. It's like a big mystery behind this villain. That Now, I was reading um, a couple story arcs, Spider-Man story arcs with Morlin. So <laughs> and he, this character just really reminds me a lot of Morlin. But he did come before him. So, the X-Men have to go up against the Guardia Civil, the, the Spanish Action Force. And also during this time, uh, Psylocke, for some reason, I think because she had uh, the Shadow King in prison in her mind, she can use her TK powers. And somehow she switched powers with Jean Grey. So, uh, now she's telekinetic. So we have the Extreme X-Men, which this team has a lot of firepower. Like none of these guys are slouches, are having a real hard time with the Spanish security forces. When they come across Vargas, Vargas totally just obliterates Rogue. Um, he's, he's portrayed as a really good fighter. And then Psylocke and Beast jump in into the fray, into the battle, trying to stop Vargas, who is going to... Seemingly, he wanted, he almost killed Rogue, and he beats the living crap out of Beast. And also, at the end of the story, he kills Psylocke. And Psylocke's going to stay dead for a real long time, actually. I'm not sure if Psylocke reappears way down the line in the Excalibur series, something like that. I would have to look it up. But I remember not seeing Psylocke for a real long time. And Beast, after this, he's taken to the hospital, and Sage... It's presented that Sage has um, uh, a mutation that she actually can um, give you or fuel your powers and make them more powerful. Much in the same vein that uh, Cortez can do. It, at least it's the only time I've seen it is just in that story. And that's why Beast just super evolves into this gigantic blue cat <laughs> thing. And uh, that particular power of... Uh, Mutants getting more powerful within their own power set is never seen again because mostly she had like mental powers and she's like a living computer or something like that. But from this point on, Happy Go Lucky Beast is gone. We're never going to see him again. He's always angry. He's always pissed off. He's always dealing with stuff. I really miss the old school Beast. So I hope you like this video and this series in general. I have very few issues from the Extreme Action. It was a real letdown. Like, uh,. The whole prophecies with um, Destiny weren't the best. They led to this con like interdimensional conqueror that was very similar to Kang, but wasn't. So stay away from Extreme X-Men or read it, but <laughs> at your own cost. So see you guys next time. Bye.